Well, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and uh, I, I would make a few observations with respect to this motion that has been put forward by Mr. Green. Uh, first of all, this motion is not unique to this committee. Uh, this is part of a coordinated campaign between the Liberal government and their NDP coalition partner in which, once again, the NDP is doing the bidding of the Liberals. We have a Prime Minister and a government that are in chaos, a government that is 20 points behind in the polls, a Prime Minister who is literally despised by Canadians, uh, a government that has managed to screw up just about everything that they have touched over the past nine years, from uh, record deficits and debt that has led to 40-year high inflation, to uh, high interest rates that have all created a cost of living crisis to which these Liberals response to the cost of living crisis that they created is to make life even less affordable for Canadians with uh, carbon tax hikes and now this latest tax hike on health care workers, specifically doctors, farmers, small businesses, and homeowners that they, uh, home builders that they claim is a tax hike on the so-called super rich when in fact every day Canadians are going to pay and pay dearly as a result. And on top of that we have a government that is mired in scandal. Um, in fact, it is arguable that this is the most corrupt government in modern Canadian history. And uh, I saw one Liberal member uh, thought that, uh, thinks it's funny, but uh, we have Dominic LeBlanc found guilty of breaching the Conflict of Interest Act. He's a senior minister in this government. We have Mary Ng, who's found guilty of breaching the Conflict of Interest Act. She's a senior minister in this government. We have Bill Morneau, who's found guilty of breaching multiple sections of the Conflict of Interest Act. He was the finance minister in this government. We have a former member of this committee, if you can believe it, who was found guilty, a liberal member, who was found guilty of violating the Conflict of Interest Act. And then we have the Prime Minister himself, the first Prime Minister in Canadian history to be found guilty of violating the Conflict of Interest Act. And he was found guilty not once, but twice. And so, and now we have the Minister from Edmonton, Mr. Boissonneau, who has so much to answer for, and I'm going to get into that momentarily. But we have a government that has a history of entitlement, patronage, and straight-up corruption. It's a, there is a culture of corruption embedded within this government that's just established based upon the nine-year history of these Liberals. So in the face of all of these failings and all of the scandals and how frustrated and angry Canadians are at these Liberals, it's no wonder that they want to get out of town. They want to hide over the summer. They want to shut down the ability of parliamentary committees to provide appropriate oversight and I'm not going to be a party to doing any of the bidding for these Liberals. And it speaks to how little respect Justin Trudeau and his ministers have 
for Canadians, how little respect they have for the law. They think they're above the law. They think the law doesn't apply to them. Dominic LeBlanc didn't think it applied to him. Mary Ying didn't think it applied to her. Bill Morneau didn't think it applied to him. Greg Fergus didn't think it applied to him. Justin Trudeau didn't think it applied to him. And Randy Boissonneau doesn't think it applies to him. I go back to what I said at the beginning, that this is part of a coordinated effort by the Liberals to <clears throat> shut down the work of all committees. And there are several other committees that are, uh, uh, that are holding hearings on liberal corruption, including the $60 million arrive scam at government operations, the uh, Green Slush Fund at the Public Accounts Committee, uh, a, a slush fund involving liberal insiders who, under the watch of Navdeep Baines and the current minister, engaged in 186 conflicts in which board members funneled hundreds of millions of dollars to their own companies in some 60 76 cases, or 60, sorry, 63 cases involving $76 million board members at the Green Slush Fund actually voted to funnel money into their own companies. Uh, it's straight up conflicts, it's straight up corruption. The Public Accounts Committee has been holding hearings now that we have the benefit of the Auditor General's report which made those findings, but it's no surprise that the Liberals want to shut down the work of the Public Accounts Committee over the summer as well. And I get it. I get it, why, I get it, as, get it as to why they want to shut things down. They don't want to have to deal with all of these scandals uh, that they have to somehow justify and defend. But I can't understand why the NDP would be a partner of the Liberals in this regard. It just, I guess it, the reason is, is part of the fact that they're in a coalition with the Liberals, propping up the Liberals, and not only on matters of policy, but in, in terms of uh, it covering up their corruption. Now, Mr. Chair, I think this committee, it's a very busy committee. It's a very busy committee after nine years of, of Justin Trudeau. And Mr. Brock is going to be questioning this afternoon the commissioner of the RCMP on, among other things, the SNC Lavalin scandal and other massive scandal involving this Prime Minister. It's a scandal that I'm quite familiar with because I sat on the Justice Committee when the Justice Committee held hearings on SNC and we heard from Jody Wilson-Raybould who appeared at our committee in the spring of 2019 in what was truly a historic day, uh, and a historic and not, a, not in a good way, but when she came before the committee and she spoke about all of the times that she was pressured by Justin Trudeau and those around him, including Mr. Wernick, the clerk of Justin Trudeau's personal department, the PCO, as well as uh, Katie Telford, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Gerald Butts, the Prime Minister's then Principal Secretary. She was repeatedly pressured to interfere in the criminal prosecution of SNC-Lavalin, and she laid that out in detail. 
And the RCMP did launch a, an investigation into what happened during SNC, and, as, and Mr. Brock detailed the fact that it took them five years and then they, for reasons that are not fully understood, shut down that investigation, an investigation that, among other things, looked into whether the Prime Minister obstructed justice. Now, one of the things that is important to understand about the RCMP's investigation into Justin Trudeau is that the investigation was obstructed by Justin Trudeau. And that was confirmed when the RCMP came before this committee, including uh, the, the RCMP officer who, was, who headed the investigation. And how, uh, how the Prime Minister is obstructed the RCMP investigation was by hiding behind cabinet confidence in refusing to turn over key documents to the RCMP, documents that the RCMP had requested be turned over to them, and the RCMP determined uh, or requested those documents because the RCMP determined that they were absolutely material to determining whether, in fact, the Prime Minister obstructed justice. Now, to put it in, to provide a little bit of background on what the RCMP requested and the Prime Minister refusing to turn over the documents and how, and, and, and what the Prime Minister did turn over versus what he didn't turn over, you have to go back to the spring of 2019. And you have to go back to before Jody Wilson-Raybould came before committee. She essentially had a gag that had been placed over her by the Prime Minister and at the time having to do with cabinet confidence. So she said, look, there's a lot I'd like to talk about uh, in terms of what went on behind closed doors, but I can't because of cabinet confidence. And I can remember the day that Bill Morneau uh, brought down the budget in 2019. We said, shouted him, I was, let her speak. Let her speak. Take the ga gag off Jody Wilson-Raybould. Well, in the face of significant political pressure, the Prime Minister Partially did, partially, and I did, but not fully. Prime Minister lifted or waived cabinet confidence up until Jody Wilson Raybould was shuffled out as the Minister of Justice. What she could not reveal, what cabinet confidence has not been lifted, is what happened from the time that she was shuffled out of the portfolio of Minister of Justice and Attorney General to, to the time that she was fired from cabinet altogether by Justin Trudeau. Why does that matter? Well, according to the RCMP, that, uh, when they appeared before this committee, the strongest theory that the Prime Minister obstructed justice was that he re removed Jody Wilson-Raybould as Attorney General and installed a new attorney general because that attorney general, that new attorney general, would make a different decision than Jody Wilson-Raybould. In other words, the new attorney general would do the prime minister's bidding. 
that is what the RCMP said is the strongest theory on the question of whether the Prime Minister committed obstruction of justice. And it's why the RCMP requested cabinet documents during that period. And the RCMP did confirm at committee that, yes, uh, that period is absolutely material to getting to determining whether the Prime Minister obstructed justice. And the Prime Minister has consistently refused to lift cabinet confidence during that period. So what we have is a Prime Minister who is obstructing the RCMP investigation. Now, I, one can draw conclusions why. Jody Wilson-Raybould has said there are things that, I, that she's, she said she would like to say, but she can't about that period. The RCMP says all of that evidence is material to getting to what is the strongest theory that the Prime Minister obstructed justice. And could it be that the Prime Minister is hiding behind cabinet confidence because there's evidence, strong evidence, that he obstructed justice? I, I would submit or suggest that that is the case. I mean, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that the Prime Minister, if, if he didn't cross the line of obstructing justice, he came right up to the line in sort of the best case scenario for the Prime Minister. It, it, Here. Go ahead on your uh, point of order. Thank you very much. I, I hate to interrupt, but can you uh, let the committee know what resources I understand? We have resources to 130 or? 112 today. 112? Yeah. So we have maximum of two hours. The uh, meeting started at 1102. We suspended for 10 minutes. And uh, that brings us to that brings us to 112. There's no way of getting more, so Mr. Cooper can continue. Um, I'm not sure because uh, the instructions that I have were maximum two hours today. So, okay. hold on. Um, we have till 112, Mr. Fisher. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Cooper, you have the floor. Uh, continue, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. As I was saying, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to conclude that either the Prime Minister obstructed justice or in a best-case scenario for him, and it's not a very good scenario, but he came right up to the line of obstructing justice in pressuring repeatedly what was what amounted to a coordinated campaign for Jody Wilson-Rabel to interfere in the decision in, in prosecution of SNC-Lavlin, a decision that had been made independently by the Director of Public Prosecutions. The Prime Minister would not take no for an answer. And when he came to the conclusion that she would not budge, she was going to stand up to the Prime Minister and stand up for the rule of law, he fired her. Mm -hmm. And then he covered up, and is now covering up, the evidence that the RCMP says it needs to complete their investigation. As I said, if the Prime Minister didn't obstruct justice, he came right up to the line. And, and I would emphasize in that regard that no matter how you look at it, Justin Trudeau doesn't come off favorably in this. He may very well have broken the law criminal code, serious offense under the criminal code, 
But at the very least, he engaged in behavior that was completely unethical. He engaged in behavior that fits by every definition. Corruption. But it goes back to what I was saying earlier, that there is this culture of corruption within this government. And it starts at the top. That, the corruption starts at the top, and it starts with the prime minister. I have no doubt that the, that the culture that we have seen is, is a direct result of, of what, the sta the, what the standard that he has set. That uh, the Conflict of Interest Act doesn't apply to me. Um, that I have, I, I'm as the all-powerful prime minister going to put pressure on my attorney general to to interfere in a prosecution, but I don't think should go forward, notwithstanding that the director of public prosecutions made the determ independent determination that that prosecution ought to go forward. Uh, that I'm going to fire my attorney general when she stands up for the rule of law. And I can get away with it because I'll just cover it up, just hide behind cabinet confidence. And you know, my colleague, Mr. Brock, talked about Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott when they were kicked out of the Liberal caucus. They, Justin Trudeau tur invited the media to come. Uh, they, they found out, I, th I think, order. basically through the media. Point of order, Mr. Chair. Go ahead on your... I know uh, it's 111 and you're going to get ready to uh, gavel down, but I would request that you suspend the meeting rather than adjourn it, just like we did last time we didn't finish debate, so we can get to a vote at the next meeting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Cooper. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and uh, he, Justin Trudeau, invited the media to watch the spectacle of, of liberal MPs who, as Mr. Brock said, acted like trained seals and gleefully cheered on the Prime Minister, cheered on the Prime Minister's corruption. Okay, Mr. Cooper, I'm going to have to cut you off there because we have reached the maximum of our resources. The challenge, Mr. Fisher, with that is if I suspend and we don't have a meeting on Thursday, uh, then that suspension carries over to uh, the summer, and that, pro that provides all kinds of difficulties for uh, the committee and me as a chair. So the meeting is adjourned.